Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a 3D dial back. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's finished in black nickel and it's on a medium wire. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Sempify. It's the classic wax thread at 6 aught. So the first thing to do, uh, a little bit of off the beaten track for me, it's not often I use waxed threads. I generally use nano silks, but on this occasion uh, I want the colour in this thread. Now they do do a nano silk that is dyed red, but it's not quite that same vibrancy I want. So this is a nice bright red. What I want to do is catch in just behind the eye and I'm going to get a bit of thread up the shank of the hook and then at the end I'm just past the point here so you see it's a nice curved up point I like that for my nymphs um, I think you keep a hold of fish better that are, are just coming in and slamming it quite hard so what I want to do at the end here is just make a little bump with my thread and this is going to be like a little hot spot in the butt if you like uh, that looks enough then I can come all the way back up and what I want to do is I'm just going to use my finger to remove any surplus wax to that and I'm going to come in with a little bit of Solaris which is a UV resin, uh, you cure it with the torch and I'm just going to add the tiniest of spots to that, just let me check that it has gone all the way around perfect and I'll just cure that off now you can get coloured UV resins that um, are even brighter than just a normal thread but I don't use them enough really, what I do is I buy them and then two or three months later when I've opened them and used them to tie five flies they just go all gunky and I don't get much use out of the resin so uh, I'm just going to stick with what I know next thing then we're going to add the tailing fibre, now you can use any kind of cock or even hen hackle if you like but I'm going to take a feather off of this cape and I've got one here that I've been working away with, as you can see some of it's stripped off and all I want to do is take off a dozen or so fibres and I want my tail to be approximately the length of the shank of the hook so I'll just hold that into place then I can lay that on top and take it all the way up to my bump just make sure that's sitting right yep. looking okay next I want to add in a wire rib I'm using some uh, silver rib it's at 0.1 millimeters, nice and thin and once I bring this round wrap wise you'll, you'll hardly see it on the pattern so I'll just catch that in on my side like so Try not to pull your tail around to the side of the fly, you want it on top of the shank. Now, the next thing is some peacock herald, and I've got some here. Uh, this is the trout line, it's hand, hand picked. It's lovely stuff to work with, actually. You're not faffing about with it. So, I've already taken two fibres out, and that's all you'll need. And try and keep them as long as you can. Now, the very tips of peacock herald is they're very brittle, so you've got to be careful with them. I'll just come up in open turns and catch that in. All the way to the back, and then I can come all the way up. Now, this part uh, is crucial. So, I've parked my thread approximately four millimetres back to the eye of the hook and you really need to give yourself this space I think a lot of um, tires when they when they tie flies they just don't leave themselves enough room 
at the front and uh, we're going to need a lot of room here so just getting plenty of extra wraps in and then what I'm going to do I'm going to attach my hackle pliers to the ends of my peacock kettle and I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise avoiding the point of that hook and that's why I like to do this um, when I'm putting heddle on because if you catch it while you're turning it on the point of the hook it, it's game over uh, it'll just snap away so this is a, a good a good alternative way of doing it so I've come up to where that four millimeter gap is just going to give it one more turn then I can bring my thread all the way up to the four millimeter point and just get a couple of turns in there now I'm going to just get a few turns in front of the material I'm not going to snap that away at this point I'm going to bring my wire rib around I'm going to come in the opposite direction and all the wire ribs doing is just protecting that herald on the hook now if you want to get a uh, real value for money out of your flies another way of doing this is before you bring your herald up you can always add a little layer of super glue it takes a little bit of extra time but the fly will last that much longer so I've got that wire rib up to protect the lower half of the body and the next thing I want to do is just bring my herald to the front of the hook like so now what I'm using for my 3D part if you like is some uh, hollow hollow fibers as you can see it's like a red holographic tinsel and I've already got a little bit cut so I want to get it even either side of my fly if I lick the thumb and forefinger of my left hand, just get some moisture on it. It just makes everything a little bit easier to see. So I'm not worried about causing bulk here. In fact, bulk's a good thing at the head. Yeah, it's exactly what I want, a little bit of bulk. Because I want the head of this fly to be slightly, or the thorax area, should I say, to be slightly... Um, bigger than the body so I'm just got it tilted on its side so I can see what I'm doing I don't want to uh, have that wandering around so the two bits of red holographic are running parallel up the side of the shank of the hook now the next thing then is to come around get in front of my peacock herald then I'm going to reattach my hackle pliers I'm a little less worried now because as you move up the herald it does get a little thicker and a little stronger so it's not as likely to burst on you so I brought that up and then I'm going to come back down creating that little bit of extra bulk I wanted and then when I get to the head of the fly I'm going to come in with a couple of thread wraps I'm going to get a couple of thread wraps in front and then with my scissors I can just trim that part away so that's looking like a hot mess at the minute but it is going to come good folks so next thing I've wet the thumb and forefinger in my left hand and all I want to do is just get that hair all sitting, sitting down. On some of my dial backs I like to remove a lot of this fluff but on this one I think it's essential to have it in. So I've brought my holographic to the front of the fly. I want to do it both together. And excuse my fingers if you can't see just want to trap that in place a couple of turns should do it 
and then just make any adjustments you want it running parallel to the shank if you can get it now once you've got yourself happy you can come in and remove the tinsel a nice sharp pair of scissors helps with this obviously so one more time I'm gonna just dampen everything down now before we finish I'm gonna go back to my my feather that I used for the tail and I'm gonna take probably about the same amount about a dozen fibers and this is for the beard of the fly so I'm going to come in I've inverted my vise so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to come in and I want it to be approximately the length of the body I'll bring that down onto the underside a couple of turns in and make sure you get your thread as far away from where you're going to cut as possible so excuse my fingers going to come in and just take that away now what you might notice is I have got a chunk of fibers sticking out over my eye now but I'm going to correct that with a few thread wraps so I'll get another few fibers in and I want to just so what I'm doing here I'm just trying to do it without cloaking the head I'm bringing my thread round and then up under the eye and I'm catching them fibers in so that they're not going to block the eye, the hook. Then I can build up my head. Come on with a whip finish tool. And then just touch your scissors to the thread, it should just come away. And that's looking pretty good. Now it's obviously damped down, I've been damping my fingers and slicking it back. And that's good because all the fibres are out the way of the head now. You can finish this with uh, varnish, super glue, or as I'm going to do here, with a little resin. Now, how would I fish this? Um, I would like to fish this in a team of flies generally. Uh, it's not a fly I've got a lot of confidence in uh, fishing on its own. So uh, as droppers, as part of a washing line rig, or even straight through with a heavier buzzer on the point and maybe three dial backs up. Now I know I've got uh, a little bit of resin stuck in the eye, so I'm going to come in with a feather just to clear that out before coming in with the torch to finish the fly off. And that's it. Thanks for watching folks and I'll see you in the next one.